This is my 1991 Honda NSX. And unfortunately, this is not going to be a particularly fun episode because we are going to be dealing with getting this thing repaired. This is a brand new Savon carbon wing. And unfortunately, <laughs> it arrived a little worse for wear. So we've got all this cracking damage. A bit of carbon missing there down here. And then of course, through here, we've got some more up along. Unfortunately, it was damaged um, on transit. It took about seven months for the item to be shipped here. Um, and annoyingly as well, all the packaging came out perfectly fine. So the box that came in, no damage. It was wrapped really well. What we suspect is perhaps when they were manufacturing this for whatever reason, perhaps they tried to test fit it bolt holes, I'll, I'll add photos, but the bolt holes on this side don't line up at all. And so we mock fitted it, <clears throat> just putting one bolt here. And then we managed to do two on here, which were fine. Um, but we noticed that when you would try and pull this out to get the bolt holes to line up, it would crack, like it would move exactly, you know, all where it was cracked up. So we've got a guy this weekend who I'm gonna be dropping this wing to. He's going to fix all the damage and he's also gonna line it up to the boot lid. So I'm giving him the boot lid and the wing. Um, and yeah. This is the cable for the high stop light. Now this was repaired in the past. I did a shoddy repair of the repair, <laughs> just soldering up some stuff. We had a bit of, when I was removing the grommet, we had a little bit of solder pop off just from spillage. But the issue I've got is this cable here, it connects right up to here. And I don't really want to remove this. I've just got it taped up um, because it's going to be a pain to sort of feed it through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove it, but I'm going to use just some wire. I'm gonna tape it up to this end and feed it through so that I end up having this cable feed through down here. Then I can completely remove this unit and this cable will be in place. So when I put, um, want to come back to reinstalling this cable, I would just need to tie it back to, this, to the wire, the string, and then feed it back up again. So that will be what I'm gonna do. It just makes it easier that way. So yeah, let's get on to that one. Got here, just got this cable tied up, and then just a bit of tape there, and then that will feed through. And then up here, we've got the same deal. So, cable's just sitting in there. I don't want it to sit on the top because he will be glassing um, this side, will be okay, but he will be glassing that side. So, I just want to keep this as flush as possible for him. But yeah, now we're on to removing the actual trunk lid. My car was not so, sorry, my car was not red from factory. Uh, this used to be Kaiser Silver Metallic, I think is what they call it. But yeah. Look at all the paint. They just like <laughs> laid a thick, a thick, healthy coat of red in the hopes that no one would ever find out. Now, what do you guys think? I think this would make a great ute. So it's been a few months since the last update, um, but as you can see, the repairs have all been done. Um, you can see a slight sort of mark where the repairs were made, um, but for the most part, the wing is, yeah, it's, it's, it's good again. Um, I have done a test fit to the car and it does fit, which is nice. It is a bit tight, but um, you basically had to re-brake, stretch it out, and then patch back up again. And apparently it was, it was an absolute nightmare. So they had the wing, the repairs had the wing for a couple months. Just getting it all sorted. A um, bit of an update on the, the Ceylon front. So there was a bit of back and forth with them, but they did eventually um, come to the agreement of doing a partial refund, which I was pretty happy about because that what they refunded just <laughs> just covered the cost for repair. All right, so back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go buy some plugs. So obviously this needs to be wired in. It did come with a um, with some kit, you know, some little bits to to wire these in. But I want to do it proper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have I'm going to buy two. I think it's two male clips. I think the one in the car is a female clip. So two male clips, which I'm going to put one on this and one on the original wheel. Oh, sorry, the original wing. And then I'm going to use a female clip. I think it's a female clip that go on the car. I'll double check. Um, and then that one will go on the wiring wheel of the car. So the plug um, is actually just situated underneath this rubber grommet, so you do have to pop that off, and it's just sitting in there. Now, if any NSX owners can enlighten me as to an easier way to get this plug out, that would be brilliant, because every time I try and get it out, it gets caught this way, even when it's lengthwise. It's just the cable's so massive, it doesn't really want to come through. So yeah, I'd be curious to see what other people's solutions are to actually get that plug out, but for me, it's usually just 
faffing about and getting really angry and <laughs> damaging the paint. <laughs> Boiler is off. Um, so they're just three on each side. They're pretty easy. It's just a 10 mil. You can get them pretty easily. Um, with my car, my, my struts have completely gone. So I have to actually just prop the boot, um, boot lid up with a hammer. <laughs> Probably not the best way to do it, and um, but yeah, that's just my only option. But yeah, so this is this is the plug. So this one controls the high stop light, which to be fair, my high stop light's a bit fucky. So, um, but yep, yeah, so that's female plugs. So I'm going to need to buy two female plugs. Um, I'm probably going to see if I can get ones that are smaller than this, just because yeah, this one's just such a pain to install. Oh, oh sorry, to um to pull out, and then this is the other end. So male plug right here. So they usually sit like wedged in there, as you can see. It's um yeah, it's just it's just such a nightmare to, to remove. Um, but yeah, so that's the original plug. As you can see, more history of its resprayed past. Alrighty, so another small update with the N6 wing. So I've just depinned the original plug. So that's the plug. For those who wanted to know how to depin them, you may see in there there's two little tabs at the very top. I'll probably just have it highlighted because it's looking pretty blurry on my end. And so I just used a tiny really tiny flathead and just pry it open and then pull the pins out. I'm sure there's a more official way that that just works for me. But <clears throat> what I was thinking was I was going to buy some terminals and then affix them to the Sabon wing. However, I've been to about four electronic shops and none of them have these kind of pins. I can't remember the name of the pin um, off by heart, but I'll just tell you what it is here somewhere. Um, but I have found <clears throat> the OEM replacements for these. Um, unfortunately, they're from the States, so they're not going to arrive anywhere near in time for me in this rally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can carefully pry open these two terminals and then I'm going to wire them onto the Seabon wing. And then when the new set comes along, um, I'll just repin these. And if it doesn't work, then I'll just repin the whole system. But that's, that's what I'm going to do now, so I'll just get rid of these. All right, I've done it, but I'm pretty sure I've, I've destroyed it. So <laughs> I was hoping that these would be removable, um, but you can see in there, the pins are in and they are incredibly wonky. Um, these are not the factory pins. These are actually those aftermarket ones that I tried to get to slot in and they're not quite, yeah, we'll see if they plug in, but damn it. <laughs> and we're back working on the wing. So what we're gonna be doing today is just weather sealing um, all the edges of the spoiler. Now that's purely because with the factory um, NSX spoilers there's actually a rubber grommet that sits on the end of these plugs and then it plugs into the trunk lid of the car or the boot lid of the car sorry um, and helps stop water getting in. Now I did debate actually cutting that, that grommet off and, and fixing it to this however it actually slots into the original wing as well as going into the, to the boot and obviously you know, this this is solid. I don't know what's back here, so I'm not going to drill and make this hole any bigger. Um, it's a bit of a bummer, but, you know, it is what it is. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a really legit <laughs> taping up the hole um, and taping around this to sort of keep it as weather sealed as possible. But um, amongst all the other bits that the packaging came with, and I, I thought I lost all of these, so I'm glad I found them. Package comes with a couple of stickers upside down, uh, some catalogs. This stuff here, I'm not entirely sure what it's for. I I gather it's to do with like measuring out the spacing somehow, but I don't 100% know. I don't know really what these are for, but they're redundant for me. And then here we've got our seals. So, I mean, I assume seal's probably a stretch because it's just foam, but we've got a bunch of foam um, divots here. So the little donuts, the inside piece, the inserts come out and you just, we're just gonna put them on each of the bolt holes. Um, but there's a fourth hole there. Oh, right, because that one's for the, for the light. Okay, yep, yeah, so three for each. And then this, this long thing, I suspect is for the actual wing itself. Um, so I'm going to have to measure that out, cut, and just adhere. And yeah, get that get that all working right. And there's two of them. Oh, there might be more than two, actually. That's all I've just tried to get it. There's a few spots that I haven't quite gotten right to the edge, but sort of to the edge with a little gap, exception of these, because I just wanted to keep it as all one solid piece. And then all the way up, and then the same for this side. All the way up, tried to get the holes, line them up, you know, as correct as possible. I think these ones, one and two, I think these are drain, are drain holes, just in case moisture gets in. But yeah, these are, this is ready for install. Hello. 
the center one. Alrighty, so the wing is installed and as you can see, very, very tight along here. Um, you're probably hopefully able to see clear enough in that video, but I had to really, I had to get John to help me just basically pull it out. Um, <laughs> so hopefully it doesn't re-damage. It's just, it, it's really annoying and it's such a bummer because like, you know, you spend so much money, you know, to a company for something to work and it just, yeah, I'm just not really happy with that, with that finish. But I mean, I'm not gonna, and then it's the same issue on this side where it's, yeah, it's really, really tight. And then it just kind of opens up. This, this side, this half was really easy to install. It was just that problem, problem side. I think it actually holds itself now that it's carbon. <laughs> um, yeah, so things like, oops, here we go. Things like here um, as well. The light's kind of a bit cracky and sad, but I mean, I don't really care too much about that. But, so we've got the, the sealant on there. There's a couple of gaps that I'm just observing now, but it's not much I can do. I don't want to run the risk of going too tight on these bolts just because it is screwing into carbon and you know, I don't want it to like break, I guess, break loose, but they're tight enough. They'll hold tension. I mean, they are holding tension. Um, so yeah, these three, this one was the absolute problem child, really had to pull pull on the wing to actually get this bolt hole to line up. Um, this one was kind of difficult. That one was easy. And then yeah, these three on this side, easy, easy, easy. Um, so we've just got yeah, bolt and little little washer for each of them. But yeah, wings installed. Only issue we've noticed, I'm just testing now and we'll see if when the car runs, it fixes the problem. But when I hit the brakes, all three lights ignite, no problems. Uh, when the lights are on and then I hit the brakes, only the bottom ones light up, this top one doesn't. However, I know that we had issues with LEDs with John's RX-7 uh, with the stoplight, so I would, and, and that, that was solved by when the actual motor was running and then this worked, so I suspect that's probably the case where once the vehicle's running, then it will get enough power to, um, to come out the high stoplight. Also, my battery is absolutely fudged. <laughs> like, we've been having problems with it constantly for the last couple of weeks, so yeah, that probably doesn't help, but yeah. Oh, there you go. The struts have given up. But there we go. We have an installed wing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Our next video will be the wheels. Um, and then, yeah, it's supposed to be the springs, but there'll be a video on the spring issue. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this really um, useful. Um, yeah, I'm just, it is, it is a bummer that, you know, this has happened. But I mean, I guess this is what you get for um, buying, you know, custom non-standard parts. Um, I've, I've heard some good stories. Sabon's always been that kind of company where there's, there's a bit of everything. There's some people that just bolt them on, they, they bolt on straight to fine, and there's others that needed a bit of work. And then there's my case where it was, yeah, <laughs> you saw the condition of it. So yeah, I can eat my Maccas on here now. I'm gonna stop the video.